Super wide monitors are nothing new, but most have a paltry 34 inch diagonal and a measly 21 by 9 aspect ratio. Enter the Samsung CHG90. This behemoth of a monitor is 49 inches from corner to corner and has a massive 32 by 9 aspect ratio. That's the same size as two 27 inch monitors sat side by side. This gargantuan screen also packs in all of Samsung's latest display technology. So you've got HDR compatibility, a 144Hz refresh rate, a 1 millisecond motion picture response time thanks to backlight strobing, and it has FreeSync support. On the surface it seems like it should be the ultimate super wide monitor, but not all is quite as it seems. First things first though, this display looks great. The elegantly curved panel, dainty looking stand and hidden bezel give it a lightness that belies its sheer size. The black and gunmetal plastics and strip of metal around the edge all work well together too. It's neither garish nor too business-like. The only slight slip-up is that there's a rather obvious gap in the bezel that just takes the edge off that premium feel. Still, this is a monitor that most people will gladly have adorning their desk. Assuming, of course, their desk is big enough. Measuring nearly 4 feet wide and weighing in at 15 kilograms, it is technically smaller than two 27-inch monitors, but not by much. Even just the base of the stand is wider than most monitors. Notably though, because it uses a conventional height adjustment, the whole thing doesn't stick out as far as the CHG70, with its weird pivoting arm adjustment. The stand also offers rotation and tilt adjustment, though understandably, pivoting isn't an option. As you'd expect of such a large monitor, it has an internal power supply so there's no external power brick to worry about, plus there's a cover for all the rear I.O. This makes for a tidy cabling setup, but makes accessing the ports somewhat inconvenient. In fact, due to the size of this display and the positioning of the ports, even with the cover removed it can be quite a pain to plug things in. The selection of ports though is impressive. You get a full-size DisplayPort 1.4 and a mini DisplayPort 1.4 and two HDMI 2 ports, plus there's a 2-port USB 3 hub. You can also use two inputs at the same time with the picture-by-picture -picture mode, so you can play console games or watch a Blu-ray while you work. Above the ports is the same ring of light as on the CHG70. This provides a nice subtle blue glow that adds a little bit of visual flair to the overall design. It can of course be turned off or the brightness enhanced by removing the decorative ring that partially covers it. Doing so also reveals the screws for attaching the VESA wall mounting point. One other little extra is a headphone holder that flips down from the back of the stand. This is very much a token extra though as it's a bit awkward to open and close and isn't all that conveniently positioned. The CHG90 has the same menu control system as the CHG70 except the main joystick that's used to navigate is now on the underside rather than the back. It still works just as well though, making for quick and intuitive navigation of the equally good menus. Tap it and you can quickly access the input selection, eye saver mode and power option, or enter the main menu. Inside this you get a comprehensive selection of colour adjustments and gaming options that ensure you should be able to get things set up just as you like. The only significant thing to note is that this display doesn't have a conventional overdrive setting. Instead, the faster and fastest response time settings increase both the panel overdrive and turn on the backlight strobing at the same time. This isn't too much of a problem except that the backlight strobing doesn't work with FreeSync, so it means you can't experiment with overdrive settings for FreeSync gaming. Alongside the joystick are three preset buttons. These allow you to store and recall several key settings, so that at the touch of a button you can switch between a desktop mode where backlight strobing is turned off, brightness is dimmed, etc. Then you can have a setting optimised for FreeSync gaming and one for competitive gaming with backlight strobing. Also note the strobing option disables brightness adjustment and alters the colour. I found I had to make quite severe adjustments to the RGB values to get back to my preferred colour balance. But this is more of an academic observation, as during competitive gaming I didn't particularly notice or care, and I would disable the strobing for any other use. Speaking of all this gaming stuff, we might as well dive right into how this display performs. For a start, the native response time of the VA LCD panel is not too bad. It's certainly not up there with TN gaming displays, but it's a huge improvement over previous VA game displays I've used. Other areas where it excels include input lag, which is very low, and FreeSync also works perfectly, with the frame rate range extending all the way from 48Hz up to 144Hz. The backlight strobing is great too. It successfully masks the slightly lower response time of the panel, making for a sharp and responsive feel that also reduces eye tracking motion blur. There is some inconsistency in terms of crosstalk from the top to the bottom of the panel, but overall the feature works really well. 
As for gaming compatibility with the ultra-wide aspect ratio, the vast majority of modern games do support it. There are two things to note though. One, most FPS games won't allow for a wider field of view, but instead stretch the edges of the image, so there's not necessarily an advantage to be gained there. Also, the 32 by 9 aspect ratio is wider than most movies, so you're still getting black bars most of the time, but to the sides rather than above and below. Moving on to general image quality, this display mostly excels. The VA panel provides good overall viewing angles that far surpass any TN display, though can't quite compete with IPS for vertical movement. It also provides a whopping 2800 to 1 native contrast ratio, which really brings a depth and vibrancy to the image. Samsung also calibrates every monitor before it leaves the factory, and sure enough it arrives looking very close to perfect. To get the best from it I did alter the colour balance slightly, but this display still far surpasses the vast majority of other gaming monitors for out of the box image quality. The only cause for concern is the slightly extended colour gamut, which sees this display covering 125% of the sRGB colour space. As a result, colours can sometimes look a little oversaturated, but it's largely only something to worry about if you're working in professional image manipulation. Instead, the biggest concern when it comes to image quality is this display's resolution. You see, despite being the size of 227-inch displays, its resolution is only that of 224-inch displays. This means that at a normal viewing distance of around 50 centimeters, it looks rather pixelated. In pixels per inch terms, a typical 27-inch display with a 1440p resolution is 110 pixels per inch, which is what I consider ideal, while a typical 24-inch display with a 1080p resolution is 90 pixels per inch. This monitor is just 80 pixels per inch. Now, to a certain extent, the sheer size of the CHG90 alleviates this, as you may want to sit a little further back from it anyway. Plus, if the resolution were higher, you'd have to use two video connections, the refresh rate might be limited, so it makes things a bit more complicated. But the point remains that despite appearances, this isn't a more efficient way of getting the equivalent of two 27-inch monitors on your desk. All of which brings us to the second most headline-grabbing feature of this monitor, which is HDR support but there's a reason I've left it till last. Samsung's whole approach with its HDR claims for this monitor and the CHG70 is that it can cover the required extended colour gamut thanks to its quantum dot backlight filtering and it can deliver some of the maximum brightness and contrast benefits thanks to the native contrast of the display and a degree of local backlight dimming. And to an extent this does work. With a measured contrast of 2800 to 1 it provides nearly three times the level you get on an IPS or TN panel. The trouble is, it's still a long way off the 20,000 to 1 that the HDR10 standard aims for, and the local dimming that Samsung has included does next to nothing to help out. There are just 8 backlight zones, which means that just the tiny cluster of pixels needed to illuminate a cursor results in a huge portion of the screen being brighter. In comparison, the likes of Acer's upcoming full array local dimming LCD has 384 zones, and that's only a 27 inch monitor. The end result is that you do get a vague impression of what HDR can do, but it's not really a major selling point. Especially as right now Windows support is a bit flaky and there isn't really all that much content out there that plays on a PC anyway. In conclusion then, this is still a great monitor. For a gaming display its image quality is fantastic right out of the box, and the sheer size and spectacle of it is fun in and of itself. Add in a nice design and plenty of features and it goes a long way to justifying its £1300 asking price. In particular, those that already have two 1080p monitors will find it a nice upgrade. However, if you're already rocking two 27-inch monitors, then you may find the downgrade in resolution to be too much, and it's a shame the HDR isn't more compelling. <laughs>